Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Here are today's top headlines. Fiat will spin off its automotive operations and get a new chairman. GM will put the Volt technology in a crossover and VW is working on an electric taxi cab. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Tuesday, April 20th, 2010, and now the news. Looks like Fiat has a big announcement to make later today. It may spin off its automotive group as a standalone company. The Fiat Group is actually a giant industrial conglomerate that includes all kinds of different industries. Agricultural equipment, manufacturing equipment, electronics, heavy trucks, and of course, automobiles. But if Fiat Auto goes off on its own, it could have an easier time forming alliances with other automakers. Bloomberg reports that Fiat could name John Elkin, only 34 years old, to become chairman of the Fiat Group. He's a scion of the Agnelli family, which controls the Fiat Group, much like the Ford family still controls the Ford Motor Company. Elkan will be replacing Luca de Montezemolo, who, by the way, ran the Ferrari Formula One team back in the 1970s. Growing algae to make oil that can be processed into gasoline or diesel keeps looking more and more promising. Bloomberg reports that at least 75 developers globally are now working on it, and now Japan is jumping in with both feet. It quotes one researcher as saying, if Japan grew algae in all of its unused farmland, it could replace almost all of the oil it imports. But as promising as this alternative fuel is, it still has a long way to go to prove it can be scaled up on an industrial size and be cost competitive. There's been lots of speculation over whether GM's Voltec powertrain will be used in another vehicle. Now we may have an answer. Autoblog is running these design patent sketches of a Chevy crossover, which credits Bob Boniface as one of the designers. He just happens to have led the design of the Chevy Volt, and this has led to speculation that it could be an extended range vehicle. Also, GM Inside News reports that the company is expected to show a Voltec powered crossover at this month's Beijing Auto Show, which would seem like convenient timing for these sketches to surface. And speaking of China and auto shows, Citroen will debut a new hybrid concept at next month's Shanghai Expo. According to Autocar, it's a big sedan called the Metropolis. And by big, we mean big. It's over 17 feet long and six and a half feet wide. That's over five meters long and two meters wide. It's powered by a two liter V6 that's mated to an electric motor. It uses a seven speed dual clutch transmission and it also has all wheel drive. The Metropolis is the first vehicle to be designed and developed at PSA's Shanghai Design Studio. And coming to the Beijing show, Autoblog has this report on the Mercedes-Benz CLS shooting brake that will debut there. This E-class sized hatchback looks like a competitor to the BMW 5 Series GT or the Audi A5 Sportback. It'll be powered by a new Mercedes gasoline V6 engine with a 60 degree bank angle and direct fuel injection. At three and a half liters, the company says it's good for 306 horsepower. More engine options will certainly be offered when it comes out, but we'll have to see if the shooting brake name makes it to production because really, this is just a fancy station wagon, a very stylish wagon, but a wagon nonetheless. When it comes to EVs, automakers have been focusing most of their energy on developing personal vehicles, that is, vehicles owned and operated by individuals. Volkswagen is taking a different approach to the electric auto with its Milano Taxi. The company is showing this green concept at the Hanover Trade Show in Germany. It's a city-sized MPV that's tailored to the needs of drivers and passengers. For easy access, it features a single sliding door that opens forward instead of backward like most minivans. Inside, there's no front passenger seat. In its place is a spot to store luggage. There's an eight inch touchscreen display in the back so riders can keep tabs on the fare or check out local points of interest. 
In the mechanical department, the Milano Taxi is driven by an 85 kilowatt electric motor and a 45 kilowatt lithium ion battery. Maximum range is said to be 300 kilometers, which is about 186 miles. Coming up next, how do you get a car to deliver over 2,000 miles per gallon? You heard me right. That is coming up next. Recently in Houston, Texas, nearly 50 teams made up of high school and university students from the USA, Canada, and Italy participated in the 2010 Eco-Marathon Americas, a competition hosted by Shell Oil, which challenged engineering students to design a vehicle which traveled the furthest distance using the least amount of fuel. The students designed vehicles for two groups. The prototype group, which were vehicles streamlined to maximize fuel efficiency with innovative designs, and the urban concept group, which was made up of vehicles closer in appearance and technology to current models and aimed at the needs for real-life drivers. Students developed vehicles that could run on gasoline, diesel, hydrogen, liquid petroleum gas, and solar power. With a gasoline-powered vehicle that achieved 2,487 miles per gallon, that is only 0 .09 liters per 100 kilometers, students from Laval University in Quebec, Canada won the prototype category. In the urban concept category, Mater Day High School from Evansville, Indiana won with a gasoline-powered engine achieving 437 mpgs, only 0.54 liters per 100 kilometers. Both teams won last year in their respective categories, and each one received $5,000 in prize money for winning this year. Don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours Thursday night when our guest will be Doug Fian, the head of Corvette Racing, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.